and uh, I've just been informed that uh, I needed to turn the microphone on. So, with that being said, uh, we're, uh, I'm still going to use the uh, New York City DOB uh, building information system website to showcase some basic uh, web scraping techniques. So even though we could just lift all this data from the open data website, you know, download a CSV file and have everything we would ever want, it's always, it's, I believe it's good practice to look at a known data set and, see, and really uh, just kind of pick at it and get a feel for how it works so then you know, once you know how to do that, you can move on to a new data set that might be a little different and you'll have, ex you know, some experience with uh, solving these problems. Uh, I, I particularly like the uh, building information system because it's a very rich data set. It has, it tells you pretty much anything you would want to know about uh, the you know, the boiler permits, the work permits, the open violations, and many other things associated with a given property on the Department of Buildings website. And it's, and, I'll, as, and as I'll show you uh, briefly, it's a very minimalist layout, so you don't really have to worry about uh, anything major as far as uh, HTML parsing. It's all very simple uh, table. It's just basically a series of HTML tables, which I'll show you in a, in a moment. And uh, the, the quickest way to get there is nyc.gov slash BIS. So I'll take you there right now. And so this, this is where you would go if you uh, if you typed in that link. And we're going to go to this part here, click on building information search. And now this is going to become important later because when there's a lot of demand on the servers, that, uh, that splash screen comes up for a moment. And that will uh, disrupt the web scraping process, so we need to be able to account for things like that. And that's just part of the web scraping process. Sometimes you have to put wait times into the, into the process to get it to work properly. So sometimes the page is there, sometimes it's not? Yeah, well, sometimes it's, it's there right away. Sometimes there's that wait a moment uh, while we get your information screen. And if you wait for it long enough, it'll give you the information you want. So. Uh, so I'll just uh, show you uh, how you can look up a given property. And for this one, I'm going to uh, choose the, uh, the, the building from uh, the 1984 Ghostbusters movie where, uh, Goz where the Ghostbusters confronted Gozer and all that. It w um, it's based on a real Art Deco building, uh, 55. Central Park West. So I'm going to hit this. And here is all the information. You get, uh, you've, you've already supplied the address. You have the borough, the zip code, this uh, unique identifier that uh, the DOB has for every, every building called the building identification number. And um, for tax purposes, the tax block and tax lot, a lot of times uh, uh, people that do work with uh, city data will search for a property by the so-called BBL, which is a uh, concatenation of the borough block and lot. So, and there's, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. Uh, you have alternate addresses for the building. You have cross streets. 
you can tell that it's a landmark and there are many other uh, bits of information here. It's uh, an elevator apartment building. And a lot of that information can be useful right off the bat. For instance, in, in my line of work, uh, it pays to know if there's what the cross streets are because when you're dispatching a technician, if you can tell them the cross street right off the bat, you know, have it in a handy uh, lookup table, then you, know, you can save a lot of headaches of, oh, I thought you said the uh, east side, not the west side. And of course, if that's like near made, you know, peak traffic hours, you're losing a lot of time and a lot of business. So, and then, uh, you know, the landmark status comes into play when you're uh, uh, trying to uh, you know, write up plans for uh, alterations of the, in, in my line of work, the boiler system, but it could be the electrical system or anything, because there are, there are when a building is landmarked, then there's a lot of uh, extra uh, stipulations that come into play that you need to be able to account for. And also, it helps to know what kind of building it is. So is it a, is it a walk up? Is it, a, is it an elevator building? Is it a condominium? Those uh, help us to be able to tell what sort of uh, heating equipment that they're going to use, because if it's just a small walk-up, they're probably, it's probably going to be a smaller unit and so on. But uh, now, let me, now, another nice thing about this uh, layout, I'm going to uh, uh, use one of the advanced features in the uh, Chrome browser going to right click it and go to inspect and as you can see you can go through the uh, the HTML and what I've uh, what I've found is that if you take if you go through it it's just a series of table elements that make up this page so it's a matter of finding the right table element that has the data that you want. And so that, na which narrows down a lot of the uh, searching. You just, all you need to know is that there, you know, something you're looking for has, you know, so a table has, um, is a nested object where the main, uh, tag is table, and then there's table body, table row, and table, I guess TD is table data entry. So you're looking for, so everything you're looking for is going to be uh, uh, held inside one of these open TD, closed TD uh, tags. So all you have to do is look for a tag that has the text you want and that, you know, and that's, and you're done. And another nice feature of this particular data set is that if you know, if you find the, uh, the tag for the data that you want, for instance, you just say, oh, look for the, uh, look for the table entry that has the words cross streets in it. Then you just you you can go to the next element and it will be the data that you want. So you just find this and then step to the next thing, and you can populate your uh, data table rather ef efficiently just from just from essentially two commands. And uh, one last thing. I'd like to point out is that uh, the URL itself, when you've run a query, will actually have information about the query you've run right in the URL. So this is called the, um, I believe it's called the request line, and so it, um, it's, it starts with a question mark, at, 
parameter one, value one, and parameter two equals value two, and so on. And it turns out, uh, I'll just uh, spare you some of the details, but all the, those other uh, uh, values were extraneous, so if you just hit that again, you get the same exact thing. So that way, you can just feed these values to a query, and you don't have to type in, you don't have to manually type in all of that, uh, you know, the address information from before. So it, so it v lends itself very easily to being automated, and lends itself very easily to being uh, searched. Okay. And uh, so let me just tell you something about the two modules that I've uh, had you install. Uh, there's first the request module. Uh, it's uh, called HTTP for humans. It's just simply a uh, module for sending HTTP requests to websites. And so, and then it uses uh, another, it has the dependency URL lib3, but uh, all you really need to know is that uh, just a couple of basic commands. For instance, uh, in order to uh, reproduce that uh, URL that uh, I showed you before, you would have your base URL first, of course, import requests. Then you have your base URL, which is everything before that question mark. And then your uh, address parameters. Borough, uh, in this case, one stands for Manhattan. Uh, the house number is 55, and the street is Central Park West. And so, and in order to get that, information off the web, you just run website equals request.get base URL and uh, send that dictionary of parameters and you will get that uh, URL that I showed you before uh, right back here with uh, the question mark and also the plus signs that fill in the spaces so uh, pretty much no special formatting considerations, it all does it for you. And then if you want to get the HTML code for that website, all you have to do is say, you know, in this case, website.text. So, and of course, I, you know, omit, omitted the actual HTML code that this would produce because of space. All right. Uh, is everybody uh, following along okay? Okay. So, let's see. And uh, the beautiful soup module is uh, actually a, has uh, many useful features. Uh, it was, you know, not only does it parse HTML, but it also parses XML or anything that uh, has like an HTML style to it where there's the open tag and closed tag uh, format. So, and it uh, essentially converts the HTML file into a searchable tree data structure and allows you to jump to specific uh, branches of that tree with simple commands. And it's uh, pretty lightweight. It's just coded in Python itself. So it's not, uh, you're not uh, invoking 20 new dependencies or anything like that. And uh, you could also, if you need a little more speed, you, they actually have a, f uh, this is a bit more advanced, but um, it, you could also swap out the parsing engine and either make it, uh, yeah, you could either use the default one that they give you you could throw in this uh, 
LXML, which uh, is a C-based engine that makes it run a little faster because it's uh, not running in the uh, Python interpreter, it's just running in compiled C code. Or the uh, HTML5 uh, package, which is, uh, it's slower than the others, but it's completely HTML5 compliant if that's something that you're concerned about. And um, another advanced feature is not only can you uh, read the, the tree, or the parse tree, you could also edit and add and delete from it with this package. But we're not going to go through that. We're just going to show the two, basic, two most basic uh, functions we're going to need. So we have uh, the find all method is pretty much all we, you can get very far in uh, web scraping just knowing the find all method. You, you know, because all, you know, for the purpose for web scraping, you're just trying to find something. So this is the thing that finds something, obvious. So, and uh, you can find, you can uh, search for things based on the tag. You could look for all of the uh, table elements, or or the TD elements, and you can uh, find. You can search for things based on uh, the attributes that certain tags have. You could even search for things by uh, text uh, using uh, the regular expressions package. And yeah, and so you should just uh, <clears throat> yeah, and then if you want to. And then once you find the element that you're looking for, if you want to jump to the next one, you would just uh, find that, you know, look for the result. And if you got a result, you can just use this, uh, this bit of code here to uh, get the data from the next element over. And that will be the uh, general pattern in this case, for uh, parsing the uh, parsing the website and extracting the data that you would like. Okay, so and uh, for and for uh, for now, I'll just show you how I would how one could go about going through the uh, DOB BIS data and. Uh, given an address, find whether or not that address is a landmark, uh, find the cross streets, and um, the uh, building class, you know, whether it's an elevator building or whatever, at, the, at that address. And so I will uh, go to my, uh, my parsing code. Uh, so... I uh, just invoke these uh, these four packages. Uh, first, uh, kind of the most fundamental function is uh, it's called get soup from BIS. So I give it the base URL and the um, address parameters in this case. And I also give it a number of uh, times to uh, retry the search because as I showed you before sometimes it gives you the uh, the uh, load screen page instead of the page you want and I can I'm telling it as a default to wait for a second try it ten times and if it keeps giving you the load screen you know it just gives up after ten tries or more or less depending on what, how you set it and so, so I just say for up to 10 tries, I give it that base URL and the parameters. And I say, if the word, so um, if the word visitor prioritization occurs in the text of the HTML, 
then we know that we've gotten the weight function. That's, that just happens to be the, the wording that they use for the title of the HTML file. So if, that, if, I can't, if I don't find that text in there, which in this case find returns negative one, then we've found our text, or then we found our data. And I also check for, check to make sure that there's no uh, not in property file return, because sometimes, you know, it is possible to give this uh, site a, uh, a non-existent address, like uh, 50,000 Park Avenue or something like that. So this, um, so basically if uh, the address doesn't exist or it just doesn't want to, uh, isn't able to give you the data in a timely manner, it would just uh, return an empty string. Otherwise it, uh, yeah, otherwise it waits a second and tries again. And if it finds the data, then it returns the uh, the parsed the, uh, the the parsed tree version of the website, which is this uh, beautiful soup object. Then uh, and uh, so this is just a. Uh, this is just kind of a helper function because sometimes the base URL is different depending on what you're looking for because you could be looking for building data, you could be looking for, uh, you could be looking for boiler data. So for instance, if I click on this boiler records function, uh, I can swap out that base URL that I, that I had before which was property po profile overview servlet and put in uh, boiler compliance query servlet and you know, I essentially am able to reuse a lot of code and you know, make it all, you know, take a modular approach. But uh, so that, that's the only reason that I have this, have this extra function here. And let's see. And then I have this function here, which uh, where I feed the borough, the house number, and the street into this function, and essentially uh, feed those, uh, convert th these three variables into the parameter dictionary and feed that into this get property profile, which in turn feeds that information into the get soup from BIS. So you type in the, per, you type in the query parameters and you get your, uh, your parsed tree of the website for that building. And Finally, once you have that, uh, we'll call it the the soup. It uh, you use uh, the find all method to find the field with the landmark status uh, name, and then from that, if it exists. You jump to the next element, and that te text will have the landmark status, whether it is a landmark or not. Same for you know giving you the cross street data if those data exist, and finally for the uh, the building class data, and it returns a dictionary with those found found data, and I'd also like you. To like to point out that uh, if this um, did not return a valid uh, website, it would still, it, it wouldn't uh, freeze on you it, because 
I do the, the search, and I always check to see if there is something there. So if, if I gave it an empty string, for instance, if I searched for you know, 50,000 Park Avenue, uh, this would say find all of these occurrences, and if it's an empty string, there will be no occurrences, so this part will not be executed, and so on down the line. And these, are, these uh, values are initially set to null, so you'll just get a dictionary of essentially null strings, but the code will execute, and if you have it in a loop, you will be able to uh, just kind of skip over that uh, rogue element and you know kind of move on. So I I did just that uh, a bit earlier. So I, this might be a little hard to read, but uh, what, so what I did was I threw this into a for loop, and I looked through all of the. Uh, possible addresses in Park Avenue from 1 to 20. And I printed out the uh, address, you know, I Park Avenue, New York, New York. And then I printed the result of my uh, web scraping function. And it prints out the address followed by the dictionary for, you know, the showing what, what the building class is, what the landmark status is. If it's blank, then it's not a landmark, and the cross streets. And I don't do any, uh, you know, kind of post uh, formatting right now. This is just uh, to show you how it works, and you can choose to do what you want to do with the uh, data that are extracted. And so, as you can see, it uh, executes and then uh, I found out that uh, apparently there is no 14 Park Avenue. So if you want to, uh, you know, if you're writing a script for a movie, you can have the, your uh, character live on 14 Park Avenue and nobody will get upset about getting their mail. Uh, same for 18 Park Avenue. And, yeah, so, and as you can see, there's a lot of elevator apartments and... Uh, office buildings and a couple of garages and so that so you can you know essentially devise any uh, query scheme that you can imagine for this data set and this simple set of commands will return the dictionaries of all of the information that you want so Yes. Um, like nine Park Avenue is said garage, but it's certainly possible that Nine Park Avenue has a parking garage below retail office building. Your output only will show one building type. Uh, yes. Yeah, and that's a that's a good example. So this was uh, I did essentially kind of a naive approach to uh, searching through these uh, buildings. Uh, certainly, what you would what is good practice is to, uh, you know, for those cases, let's see, so we'll go, well, it was uh, not, you said it was 9 Park Avenue, so we'll do, I'm kind of doing a shortcut here, and so it, yeah, in, in this case, it, it's also attached to 11 Park Avenue, so it's very possible that 9 Park Avenue is considered the address for the garage beneath and 11 Park Avenue is, oh, well, in fact, that is a garage as well. But uh, that is a good point because sometimes uh, you'll do this search and this, uh, this, this part b that says buildings on a given lot usually is just one, but sometimes it could be two. I've seen it as high as uh, eight in some cases. So it pays, it would also pay to, you know, when you're scraping to pull this buildings on lot variable to make sure that you're not skipping uh, valid addresses. And so you would just need more complex code to check if that exists, if that exists, go grab that and then put it together. 
Yes, and yeah, and so I, you know, I figured, at least for the, for this talk, I didn't want to get everybody bogged down on the minutia of the DOB system, as it were. So, but yes, that's a certainly a valid concern for for any data set is to understand the assumptions that are going on and make sure that you're not just, you know, getting garbage results because you're using, you know, faulty assumptions. And so, so, and then uh, just to, uh, for, for your, uh, kind of for your own information, uh, if you want to get further information on the documentation of the two packages I showed you, there is a wealth of information on these two sites uh, where the documentation is fleshed out in detail. There are also uh, alternatives to Beautiful Soup. For instance, uh, there's uh, Scrapey, which uh, is a more advanced uh, web scraping framework, which ha um, all many of the things that I did by hand, this um, this framework does in a more controlled uh, structure. Structure, and uh, if you're interested in that, uh, Kara Villanueva is uh, giving a talk on it tomorrow afternoon, so I would recommend that. Also, if, you're, if you uh, run into a system that uh, you know, doesn't have the, these, uh, like a convenient uh, URL like this one, you know, sometimes, like for instance, uh, this uh, here I can do you know, a search for uh, 55 Central Park West again, and this is uh, a different uh, database that the New York City Department of Finance hosts. I uh, search for that, and when I get the result, yeah, so I do this, so uh, do then I have to go through this other process. And as you can see, it just says BBL result. It has no uh, connection to what I've searched for. So you need something a bit more sophisticated than just requests sometimes. And I have found that uh, this package, uh, Selenium, is useful because it uh, stores all of the cookies and the JavaScript internally. It's a bit you know, top heavy, but it gets the job done. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So, and uh, does anybody have any more questions? Oh, he said he said that uh, there are. It's not just uh, you don't. You're not just uh, sending gets, but you're also using uh, posts which uh, is why it doesn't, it, you can't, yes, that's why. Yeah. I have a question concerning that reality that you were talking about. Like, okay. Okay, somebody said that I can't scrape off their website. But like, unless they have a tool saying, you know, checking to see if anybody's running for service or something, but like even then. Well, as I said, it's a. Check the, the request on it or something, but yeah. like, Which is why I say it's a legal gray area. Because, again, I'm not a lawyer. I, <laughs> I. You probably wouldn't get caught. Yeah. Like slowly enough and randomly enough, it'd be really hard to tell if it's a human or a bot doing it. Fair enough. Yeah. Slow. Yeah. So yeah. So I would say you know, for most cases, it probably you know if you're not sure about it, uh, I wouldn't put a you know, a cluster on the job. Yeah, maybe, maybe just like a small laptop will do. Okay, I, I have a question. So, in terms of agreements, it doesn't do it. Uh huh. But they don't have a robot that's there. Yeah. Uh huh. How would they have a robot that's there? 
Right. Well, I suppose they could look in the logs and say, hey, this IP address has been sending 50,000 requests a minute. Maybe we should look into that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. They, they can also tell by uh, the browser header information. Yeah. The Gulf browser send. This can send it. Uh, so you can make it look like a phone browser or Chrome or um, Safari. So you can, you can lock it up to look different. And like there, there might be a need, like you know, in the U.S. it's pretty clear about you know the gray area and what you can and can't do. But you might be doing something where you're purposely trying to get something in another country that is a human rights issue. So it might be illegal in that country, but it's a good thing to do. So yeah, you might want to sort of disperse it around so they can't easily pick up on your screen. Okay. Okay. So some good, good discussion on the uh, kind of the process of web scraping. So does anybody else have any more questions? good question and I I've been at this for a while and I don't really have a good answer at this point I know that uh, one of my the city servers that I've that I depend on recently changed their format just a little bit and I had to reconfigure my uh, logic code so yeah so yeah, it's always it's always worth uh, double checking every so often. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Have a good day.